Greetings YouTube, this is BJ Black, and this is part 20, the final part of my Let's Play of Mon Moose Quest Paradox RPG, Catalyst Chapter. As you can see, I'm backtracking here. I managed to forget a small medal in the last video. It's right here, in the Safari Ruins. Let's head back to Saloon and get ready for some plot, because plot is going to happen. Here's our final th Tartaros. So there's a pile of dirt in the way. We're going to attempt to get over it by force, but it's going to throw us back. Which is pretty impressive for a pile of dirt. There's some kind of strong magic worked into it, so it won't let anyone in. But if we have gnome work at it, she points a figure and it's gone. Gnome's amazing! So now we can come into the Tartarus. Here's a white rabbit's first and only appearance on this entire continent. Yeah, she's close to the Tartarus. So she came out again. Well, is she tr how's she going to try and piss us off this time? Yes, she admits to putting that pile of dirt in our way. But can't we do something about Luca? Geez, he wants to see his father's face so badly. Look, get on topic, you. If you keep getting in our way, we're going to have to beat the hell out of you. Ah, she's not getting in the way, she says. She wanted us to have Gnome before we came here. And now we get to go see what happens when chaos consumes a world. Isn't she helpful as always? And she ran away again as always. She said something really ominous when she left as well. Every time she's always like... Like that. She also forgot something. She's going to give this to us. It's not going to be of any use, but it's a bother to her, so she's going to hand it over. And those are Nero's glasses. When the two of them clashed earlier, she stole them. And he wandered about calling out for his glasses. Glasses, glasses. A cool guy like that said something like that. Nope, she's lying. Again. Yeah, or, or, in fact, quite the opposite. As payback, she, he chopped off her head. But as you can see, it grew back right away, so she's fine. So, in any case, she's going. Well, only one thing to do, and that's to jump into this giant hole in the ground. So in this particular Tartos, we have these kind of black crevices opening up, blowing up walls in space and things. A crevice of nothingness. This is where nothing is congealed into a solid form and starts to erode, erode space directly. So, the chaos that inhabits the world is... What is it? What is it? Let's keep hurrying onward. Thanks a lot, Elias. Oh, by the way, don't touch that. If you touch it, it'll be destroyed. 
that's one way of translating it. It's a Japanese thing. She didn't actually say the object of the sentence. So it could be misinterpreted as saying that if you touch it, it will be destroyed. Which is what Sonya says. Elias clarifies this. No, if you touch it, your arm will be destroyed. Yeah, Sonya was about to touch it. Yep. So there are a lot of these around. Sonya observes so. And it's gradually biting up the reality around it. If it's like this, what's on the other side of the door could be like this. Speaking of doors... And here we are in this place again. The tunnel that connects our world to a parallel universe. This is kind of like the space between two walls, where the walls are, where the rooms themselves are universes, is one way of visualizing it. So let's hurry on. Lucas th thinks that he's seen a place like this before, but he isn't sure where. Come on, Luca, hurry. And we move on. There is another place like this you can see. If you lose the game, you'll come into a place like this, and there's also a door in the temple of the starting village that leads to a place like this. So here we go. Definitely going to be dangerous, but we need to know what's going on here. Yeah, and the space-time crevices are here, too. Quite a terrifying scene. And here we can see where nothing is. There's a lot of nothing around here. <laughs> yes, the world is getting swallowed up into nothingness. Nothing as far as you can see. And the only thing remaining in this world appears to be this island. Then what happened to the peace of this world? Well, we don't know, but we better be careful as we proceed. It'd be nice if there was some place to rest. And there's an earthquake. Well, it's rather big for an earthquake. But no one can tell us that there is no power of Earth in this space. So it wasn't an earthquake. Sylph also says there's no power of the wind either. Like the wind and the Earth are both dead already. Elias senses the presence of apoptosis nearby, so... We need to take care as we, first, as we examine the area. So yeah, this whole world, and this is all that's left of it. And a suspicious looking tower. The entrance is open, so let's head in. And someone's headed this way. Some kind of mechanism. And she welcomes us. This is not a human, right? This is Radio. A prototype mechanical life form. On her master's orders, she's come to greet us. So who's this master, and is he a survivor of the world? The radio tells us that all intelligent life on the planet has been destroyed. There are no survivors. Humans and monsters as well? The last human died 25 years ago, and the last monster died 6 years ago. 
in no time, this world will also be destroyed. Ilias asks about the angels. The angels aren't included in those life forms that are gone, are they? The last life, the last angel died eight years ago. There is no remaining intelligent life. So what's this master type person? Some mechanical life form like you? She will guide us to master. She asks us to follow. There are defensive monsters active in the tower to keep the Apotosis out. Be careful. So when we say life form, apparently mechanicals are excluded. The undead are also excluded. You can encounter a number of them in the tower. They fight off the Apotosis, as Radio said. And we can go down to head towards the master. And we can go down to head towards the master. She's kind of simple-minded. Or perhaps single-minded would be better. This is the underground level. This isn't where Master is, so we've gone exactly the wrong direction. So, what was used here? This is where we kept the Apotosis that were captured and, and researched them. The simpler Apotosis were fairly easy to capture. So, doing research on Apotosis. Uh, one more thing. On this level, all the pots are traps, so be careful. But what we're here for is this small metal in the dressers. Whenever a radio is in a screen, she'll always turn towards you. She's always here by herself, so she gets pretty lonely. So we go up here and we'll find Master on the top floor. Again, vibrations in the earth. The dimensional crack has increased 12%, or cracks. The rate of apoptosis generation has, is at 145%. This world will shortly be destroyed. You mean right as we arrive here, it's starting to disappear? The timing's too great here. Is it possible that our arrival caused this? Well, yes. Our arrival is a Type 2 Severed World Contact. It stimulates the the transformation of the world into chaos. Yep, it's our fault that this world is being destroyed. Well, all the intelligent life was gone already. So it's only natural the world itself would disappear. It can still be postponed, so we need to hurry and meet Master. So if the world's going to be destroyed, shouldn't we hurry and leave before we're destroyed with it? But Luca wants to forge onwards. After all, they can postpone it. And they will for our sake. When most of the world had been swallowed up in chaos, the few survivors gathered in this tower. On this level is where they lived. Though they are all gone now. To continue, we head left. We're bad at listener. There are a number of past scenes we can view here. Here the small girl is asking why there are so many flowers. 
the Aura Auraone is preserving them, as many as possible, so that the children of the future can see flowers and know that this beautiful, this world still has beauty left in it. The girl asks if the children of the future will think that flowers are pretty. And when that time comes, will they be able to head out and leave the tower? The Alarani says that the great people are working on that. So when the time comes, there will also be t lots of flowers outside. This is where they attempted to preserve the plant life they could, but it's all dried up now. Radio has tried to preserve them in dried form as best she can. She is sorry. She doesn't understand the beauty of flowers. The only thing that remains is Radio. She's sorry. And the warrior heads out to fight. There's a monster out there fighting also. She says she'll protect this room with her life. A girl tells her mama, her mama she's scared. And her mama says it'll be alright. Everyone's fighting outside and they'll defeat the Apotoshis. A boy curses fate for having delivered them up into this. And the dog girl whimpers and says she's scared as well. A middle-aged man says that the numbers are too great this time in the attack. They won't hold out. The last words from a warrior and an angel apologizes to Elias that she wasn't able to protect these people. The Apotosha says it will destroy all life. And the people scream. The child asks her mom to save her. At the time of the third attack, the non-combatants sheltered here. They were all killed. The girl admires a stuffed bear. This monster found it while she was foraging. She was foraging underground for food and found this, so she brought it up, thinking she would thinking the girl would enjoy it. The girl's sister asks her to thank the monster well. And she does. That sister also thanks her for always taking such good care of them. But... The monster asks her if she is feeling well on account of those sounds she made. Possibly. Well, we know what this means. Destroy, she says. Damn, another one's changed into Apotosis. The vampire says it's dangerous and tells the little girl to get away from it. But it's even worse than that.
These abominations. The more affluent people and monsters stayed in this room. But they are all dead. One researcher says that the Apotosius are forcing their way into DNA. There, are, there is an extremely high rate of mutations in it. Could it be something about space-time? A third re researcher explodes in rage. He yells that there is no meaning to this. We're all going to die. What the hell is this research for? The first one replies that, even so, this is something we must do. Someday, someone will come here, and for that purpose, someone will come here. Who would come here? Some kind of alien or something? We need to convey to the future what we faced and what we fought. We researchers who don't, can't use weapons have to fight in our own way. Everything we can find out we have to leave behind. For the people who come after us. Even if our future is wrapped in despair, we have to fight to the very end and leave proof. What proof we have that we fought. The third researcher falls silent. And the first continues. Let us continue our research, comrade. To let someone know that there was this world who this world that was destroyed. And we fought to the very end. And we held our heads high. So this was the research room. <clears throat> but there is no one left to research. All the research data is held by Master. We need to go meet him. A youth says that this bookcase has gotten has been properly indexed in the catalog and the priest says that his bookcase will soon be finished as well they have to leave behind all these documents to let those who follow know what knowledge they had radio here asks a question why do they so passionately leaving behind these documents? The future is decided upon. And all of these people will end up dead. Radio says some harsh things. We have to leave behind proof that we lived. It would be regretful for us to simply be destroyed like this. A life that had nothing left behind is sorrowful. It's 
a sorrowful, sorrowful existence. Regret, sorrow. Radio does not understand. Well, radio is a device. She probably won't feel sorrow if she, when we have passed away. But the priest disagrees. There is a soul living in her as well, he says. She will be sorrowful when we are gone, he believes. But Radio doesn't understand. This is the library for the age that follows. All the knowledge they could. If even one book, they tried to preserve it all. But there is no following age. There is no one who won't read. Even though they tried that hard. Radio says she has no feelings. No sorrow. No regrets. She doesn't understand. But still, she remains. Only she who possesses no emotions. They all tried so hard to the very end. They fought so desperately to live. Radio. Hilde, who isn't actually in our party at this point, says that Radio is feeling sorrow. She is sorrowful and she is she's regretful. She is? Radio says she has no feelings. Hilde says she understands. Radio also did her best. And now she says to please go meet Master. For everyone who, saw, who fought so hard. Oops. Now it seems like the whole world is shaking. Dimensional cracks. 45% increase. Apoptosis rate of generation is at 265%. The advent of chaos is accelerating. And in the area of the Tartaros, the highest level of Apoptosis has appeared. Her name, Aldoramelk. Changing the area around her into chaos, she is approaching. Highest level apoptosis, huh? No time left. Let's hurry and meet this master or whatever. And master is this way. This is a barrier field that slows down the rate of chaos advent. It lasted a lot longer than the original expectations, but shortly it is going to cease function as well. And let's hurry on to the next level. But 
this is the point of no return. Once we go up these stairs, we either succeed or we die. But in either case, we won't be able to come back to this tower again. So make sure you grab everything you want before heading up. Master is on the floor above this. Please head up. So finally, right above here. He's not a bad guy, is he? The highest level level Toshis, Adoramelk, is quickly heading towards the tower. We must quickly meet with Master. So go ahead, speak with him. Welcome travelers from another world. I am La Croa, the master of this cast of this tower. <laughs> what is he? Adoramelk has infiltrated the tower. Direct the defensive monsters against it. Buy as much time as you can. Understood. As you can see, we have little time. As for my nature, we don't have time for a ex full explanation. Think of me as an undead monster. In this world, there is nothing living remaining. So what happened here? In Johannes calendar year 1456, in the Remina region, the chaos advent started appearing with the dimensional cracks spreading throughout the world. Chaos started eroding space-time. It is now 30 years since then and this is and the results are as you see. Now it won't last even one more hour and this world will be disappearing into chaos. So what is the cause? How did this come about? As the chaos spread throughout the world, the strong and the knowledgeable came and gathered at this tower. Or rather, they were chased here. They desperately tried to hold on and fought through. Some of them died to the Apotolcius. Some of them were swallowed up by the chaos. In those bitter days, I and my comrades researched desperately everything we could about the chaos. And finally our, di our diagnosis was in this world, we did not follow the proper history. The proper history. This was mentioned in Luca's dad's letter, and the White Rabbit has said it as well. A paradox appeared somewhere at some point in history. The existence of a contradiction caused space-time to start to unravel and turn into chaos. By the time we real came to that realization, I was the only one left. So a paradox causes the chaos, and that swallow starts to swallow the world. Chaos is nothing this both are the same thing they are equivalent radio says that Aronelk has reached the second floor their forces 
have lost over 50% of their power. Set all the defense mechanisms again. It's them. Get sub her as long as possible. So this is all that we have found. There are many unknown points and much that we, they cannot confirm. A paradox somewhere in history. And that turns this world into this. As it regards the paradox in question, it would seem it did not originate in this world. It originated in another parallel universe. And through some link, it caused these effects in this world. So this is just a side effect of what happened of the true center, per center point epicenter, I'm trying to say. And Ilias has speculated, Lacroix will confirm, our world too in a short time we'll see the same fate. No way. And it is not simply our world. All the parallel universes will all be drawn in and plunged into nothingness. When that happens, the only thing that will remain is perfect nothingness. Yeah, no way. Like all the other no ways. Adramilk has infiltrated the third floor. Our forces have been lost at over 90%. Concentrate the anti-chaos field on the third floor. Overload the devices. We need all the time we can. And he tells us we must return to our world, the world from whence we came, taking this. And he offers one book of notes. That is what I and my comrades, the result of what we fought for. Our deductions and the results of our resources are summarized in that book. If someone knowledgeable can decipher all of the knowledge, knowledge therein, what comes afterwards may not be a certainty for you. Take this to the me in your world. These notes. Do not let our fight be in vain. I entrust our hope to you. Entrust. Then you are. The highest level of Voltosis is now on the floor beneath us. I will buy you time to escape. In the back of this room is a magic circle. In it, you can transport to the first floor. And then you must flee this world. Luca wants to save him, of course. If this world with, is to be destroyed, he should run with us. I have already entrusted my hope to you. Take that and give it to me in your world. Uh, Luke is doing all the hero stuff, saying that we can't leave him behind. 
this time he'll offer to fight the Apotosius with him. Do you want your world to end up like this? If you're destroyed here, everything will be disappear. Hurry and go. And protect your world. Well, Elias is convinced. She tells Luca to come as well. They've entrusted uh, everything to us. So, Lakaroa says he's fought Adramelk many times. She is the highest level Apoltosius, and each time she appears, her strength increases. To us as we are now, there is no hope of winning. He will stop her here. Now, to the magic circle in the back and escape. Here we have a Queen Skula, clearly dead. Also, it appears that La Croa has been using them since their deaths as some form of undead, and they have been completely worn out. Even as undead, they can't move anymore. Here's another one, a Queen Lamia. La Croa says the same for each of these. Another one, this one is called Rosa. So here is one last healing point, and if you notice this, this one allows you to switch around your party and change jobs and races. So everything you need for the final battle. Do we leave? Yes. La Croa has one last request. About Radio. She is the prototype formed by a comrade to whom La Croa owes much. Her abilities are not high, but he does not want her to be destroyed here. Will you take her with you? No, is what we say. Well, what we can say. But even if we say so, she, he will force her upon us. Radio, I'm transforming your master ship. And she affirms. Luca is set as her new master. Funny how Luca gets to be master of these things. I'll replace Vanilla. Very well, go. Thanks, Lacroa. We will deliver your package. And we will save our world. Oh, Luca says some good hero stuff. We have inherited the hope of your world. We will take good care of it. I'm counting on you. Save the world. Silk du Croa. This is your final stage. Second order. Severed world contact. Proceeding to eliminate. The final stage with no spectators remaining. But I shall dance to my heart's content. So yeah. Space time has been eroded this badly. 
could this be the power of the highest apoptosis? Well, Radio can confirm that her former master and Adoral Narkar have begun fighting. So let's hurry and get the hell out of here. This is hardly even recognizable as the first floor we came through. Radio tells us her former master's reactions have disappeared. And Outro Milk has also been destroyed. Let's go. I wonder if there are any encounters during on this part of the first floor. There is a reaction approaching. This is Second Order Severed World Contact. Proceeding to destroy. No way. Lao Crow gave his life to stop her. Radio ana analyzes that Adoro Milk's remaining power is at 10%. She has received heavy damage from, the pre from her previous fight. If she's only at 10%, we'll finish her off here. And here her power manifests a bit more by changing the background and creeping her out some more. Destruction commencing. Now we have to spend some time talking about how fearful it is that this is only 10% of her power. But we can't lose here. Hero talking hero stuff. And this is Adoro Milk. Da 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 di se 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 sho sho. And she's been destroyed. Right, so let's get the hell out of here. This place isn't gonna hold any longer. No way, she's still living. She won't let us escape. She'll take us with her. She'll take us with her if she has to. And she grabs onto Luca's body. Let him go. Jeez, we don't have time for another battle. Destroy, destroy, destroy. So this is the end. And at that instant... Adoral Milk was cut in half from behind. remains dissolve into nothingness. And this is some guy. No way. Oh yeah, yes way. Dad! I hope you're ready to listen to Marcellus talking. We've done a lot of talking, but this is Marcellus talking. Luca. You must protect your world. Everything else I shall protect. Were you paying attention? That was Luca's dad talking. And he walks off and disappears into the strange space. Well, Luca asks him to stop, but he doesn't. And we don't have time to chase him, we have to escape. So Luca takes one law. One last look at his father's back as it disappears. So his journey is taking him off to another world. He's not being destroyed. He somehow has some way through there. All right, let's go.
can't be postponed any longer. Let's hurry. So somehow they got back safely. But that was pretty dangerous timing. What the hell's up with Luca's dad? As expected, Marcellus was able to travel between the worlds. But how was he able to get such power? That wasn't the power Elias knew him to have. What the hell has he been doing? But he did save Luca. So it's certain that he cares deeply for him. Yep. And he told us to protect the world, huh? This world, specifically. With this, Lacroix's world is now gone. And our world will s travel the same path, but... For these notes that we got from Lacroix. The final hope of that world that was filled with despair. So, as promised, we need to deliver them to the Lacroix in this world. And now that we're back to lighthearted music, that means we're done with the heavy stuff. So Sonya complains about having yet another task to complete. It's quite a busy mission they're on. But it turns out, all of these things were tied together as speculated before. And the more that the history gets away from the proper history, the more the chaos will be stimulated in the world. Mark Ellis somehow knew that and started traveling between the parallel universes. The White Rabbit's goal is probably also the same thing. Everything's been tied together. So we can't let the, our world end like that. And we have must do what must be done. What needs to be done. Yeah, world of crisis. So let's do our best. We! And Noam says what Noam always says. So Minnie says it sounds like fun. Miranda says this is the time for the scale bandits to show themselves. And Radio will do her best. Those last eight lines are the lines of the eight people in your party. So if you have different people in your party at this point in the game, you get to hear a different line for each one. So let's set out on our journey to fix everything. But this is the conclusion of the Catalyst chapter. Next up is the Confrontation chapter, which isn't out yet. At best, it'll come out in August. I'll talk about that a bit more later. Speaking of which, in the next video, I'm going to show you what you can do in the post game. There isn't a whole lot of things, but I'll show you what there is. And I'll talk about my plans for the confrontation chapter as well. Greater Toro Toro Resistance. So now it tells us that the Catalyst chapter is over, and the story will not proceed any further. However, we can continue the journey in the Confrontation chapter, and our save data can be carried over. And that's that. That concludes for today, so see you tomorrow, YouTube.